Tristan Crazy was the first title of Ken Smith's that Blood Axe published. It was also Blood Axe's first publication, and it began the real establishment of Ken's reputation in Britain and of Blood Axe as Britain's premier poetry publisher. This was in 1978. I'd already known Ken since 1976 when I met him at Leeds University, where I had just begun my MA year. It was autumn and the first meeting of a new influx of wannabe editors to Poetry and Audience, the long-enduring poetry magazine issued by the School of English. Ken had arrived at the University as Yorkshire Arts Creative Writing Fellow. He had an office on the ground floor of the building in the Chancellor's Courtyard, where the School of English was then housed. The courtyard at that time was a bare expanse of brutalist concrete. Today it's a mini park. Ken had a definite physical presence, which, together with his age, being a few years older than the rest of us, and his voice, which would sometimes swivel between the mid-Atlantic he'd picked up from his time in the States and his native Yorkshire, distinguished him immediately. I occasionally popped into his office to get some feedback on my rather juvenile scribblings. Ken was always supportive without being evasive, and it's thanks to him that I managed to get a grasp on the business of writing poetry. You've got to know what's driving the poem, is what he said, and it stuck with me. Dead simple, of course, and obvious, but easily missed. A lot of what I'd been doing up till then was a ragbag of images, phrases and ideas. This was when it changed. As time went on and we became friends, we would have a pint in the local pubs, the Vavisham and the Fenton. Ken was generous with his time and his encouragement, and often took part in the amateurish events that a group of us would organise locally. I remember him coming along to read his poetry at the Breadline Gallery in Rodley on the outskirts of Leeds, which he did for no fee except a couple of beers. Members of the School of English also organised poetry readings by new and established poets, usually at lunch times, and Ken was often instrumental in helping with these. After the readings, of course, we always ended up in the pub and occasionally in a tutor's office to carry on the drinking and talking. Before he finally finished at Leeds, he organised a huge day-long poetry fest, Eleven Poets Live in Leeds, which took place in the Playhouse. Among the cast were Basil Bunting and the great Polish poet Zbigniew Herbert. One of the things about Ken's work up to that time that struck a chord with me was that he wrote about the landscape of North Yorkshire and the Dales particularly. The following poem, another part of his childhood, describes some of his memories of the place. It appears in the collection Work Distances Poems, published by Swallow Press, Chicago, in 1972, while he was still working in the States. At the same time as it says goodbye to the landscape of his childhood, it also acknowledges the deep-rooted persistence of its memories. Another part of his childhood. To speak of the north of my own life is bleak, is to say I have already said it. I ran with the swale, clear mountain river around me, learned in its stones. I was its listener, that country of turf and hill falling into the cut, but oh slowly. A hard grind, the soil held back, the wheat lay thin by the river, storms raked the moor. Abandoned farms, pit shafts, abbeys, monks latin gravestones, the pines reared in the drizzle. In 47, shut in with dead sheep, the four-month snowfall pinders. Askrig, Mask, the high-perched villages of the Vikings looked down on us. My father, a small gentleman I had seen weep for a dead dog, took a shotgun, chased my uncle over the moor. It was a life bound to the land, to silence of another kind. It was the other place. For the last time, I turned from it. I set my face. It is wherever I look. Shapes my life took. The blown hill, the sun close on the mountain, the yellow weeds waving. Already in this poem we can pick out some of the characteristics of Ken's poetry that distinguished him from the majority of his contemporaries. This is a northern English voice, rooted in the land, history and language of the north, rather than that of the South. It is working class and it is rural, not urban. Ken's trajectory, of course, took him out of that whole environment, 
so that he explored both the American experience and eventually the Central and Eastern European one as well, with all their differences in history and language, and shifted to the urban, notably signalled by the appearance of fox running. Ken was able to combine the distant past, the near past and the present into a kind of continual present. The idea of borders and the changing nature of borders becomes important in terms of the way his poetry works as well as in its more obvious social manifestations. I mentioned earlier that Ken was generous with his time and encouragement. During the 1980s and 90s he became a kind of mentor to a new generation of poets who found his techniques and his approach to subject matter inspirational. I'll end with a poem from Tristan Crazy, that first Blood Axe collection, which is structured around a reworking of the medieval legend of Tristan and Isolde. 9. Shorty's Advice to the Players In the flinty upland of sheep and ravens, they dreamed each the other's vision. Birds, these flowers bursting a thousand years back, tramped in the battle's muck. Forget the knights, a fist on a field of Asia, his lady, her feet on the chained swans, not able to turn the stone cheek to his cheek and cry. He would not, small in his armour, tender as mollusk, stone in the cathedral. Hitched her skirt on his lance point, laid her down, not first, last, nor long remembered. Went, bum, singer, a fool, the black, furious horseman. Nothing worked out. His death, Full of briars, a black sail, a white sail he's glimpsed in the magpie's jittery flying. Little brother, she won't ever come back now. Get used to it. <laughs>